you, thank you, thank you. I had this terrible problem in that I made a mistake and I moved from Colorado to Florida two years ago and then I discovered what kind of a government we have today. You may notice I do have my pink uterus button on. I was totally flattened when the Speaker of the House told a, an assemblyman, um, Scott Randolph from Orlando, what Scott did is he stood on the floor of the legislature and he said, I have told my wife that if she really wants to be saved in this state on reproductive health, she should incorporate her uterus because Republicans never go after corporations. <laughs> decided that they, he should be disciplined for using the uterus word on the floor. Um, so people in Florida are wearing uterus buttons. But the only further is what this wonderful woman Maya said about the war on woman, women that is going on in the House of Representatives, that is going on in legislatures all around this country, and they are trying to push us back as far as they can. And if they can get us economically dependent, they can control us, ladies. That's what this is all about. They really want to pull us back in and get us back in there. Um, you know, those, that whole group that believes that the, the male has to be the godhead. You know that whole thing? I mean, it just scares me. But they're all over the place. And they're on the hill. I mean, they're part of that family group, remember? And so it, it is a real concerning thing that this is happening. And I also want to under, underline what she's saying, because I think many of the Democrats that we know and love are suffering from the Stockholm Syndrome. You know? um, and this is America, damn it. Um, you know, we set them up there to fight, and the next thing we know, they're, they're tap dancing, trying to explain, well, and you know, today, I don't know if you noticed it, but they did it again. Today they announced a $20 million funded campaign already launched against all these Democrats, including the president. I mean, they, they got money to throw at this stuff till it goes, you know, on forever, until they get it all. And they're getting close to getting it all. But the good thing is, they may have the money, but we have the people. And that's what we really got to talk about tonight. Um, there are so many things I want to say. As I say, we now have these pink slip rips. Which is our And I could go on and on. And I want to thank all of you who've worked for the Equal Rights Amendment, worked to open doors for women, have rocks thrown at us, been called everything you can think of, had crap thrown at us. And then we got to stand there and watch running through those open doors a moose hunting pro-life pit bull <laughs> hockey mom um, <laughs> and wonder what in the world we were doing, right? Now, I got into great trouble with the press because someone said, what do you think? of Sarah Palin. <laughs> and I said, well, about the same as I thought of Phyllis Schaffer. Yeah. And I said, the one thing we know is when you work to push open the doors, you don't get to control who runs through. Um, we were open up for everyone. And they've really shown their ill manners. They never stopped and said, Thank you. <laughs> Nor have they tried to open the door for one more person. So we kind of know who they are. And we have the right to point it out. And there is some good news that came out of that. Now, think about this. As we go forward, if we can get more women running, and we ever hear any of those cultural warriors out there attacking working moms, you can put gauze in their mouth because they were out defending little Sarah. They all, you know, they were out defending her as a working mom. So that's some good news. The cultural warriors can't go out there again. They'll look pretty stupid. 
Um, they also kept talking about how she was being harmed by sexism, which I thought was hysterical. I loved watching those conservative commentators talking about sexism in Portland, so. Um, <laughs> really, that was quite interesting. And the other thing that I really thought was quite interesting is they were talking about the daughter's pregnancy as a challenge. Really, really. So, um, they did, they did have to do a little twisting on their petards as they tried to do that. But I must say the rest of it is total bad news. I mean, we've got women out there that, um, well, I don't know what they are, but we, we don't, you're absolutely right. We have to look at the leaders that are standing for the right values. And there are many people, I used to always say that my wonderful friend, God love her, she's gone this year, Jerry Ferraro. Yes. Was, um, she lost because of rednecks and red lips. Um, I, I can't tell you how many women I would hear say, well, I'm not going to vote for her because she's a woman. And I don't know what they thought they were going to get out of that. If the guys were going to let them in the club, or what was going on? Because the guys weren't going to let them out of the club, but invariably a guy would go over and say, well, I'm really happy to hear you say that, because if I had said that, they'd have said I was a sexist. And I thought, oh my gosh, well, aren't we proud of ourselves, how we stand together? And I do think that's one of the problems. We have to learn to stand together so much more than we have in the past. amazing thing. We women are the sleeping giant in this country. We really are. If you look at the Obama election in 2008, he carried the men 49 to 48 percent in one sliver. Well, among women it was 56. He got, he got 56 percent of the women and, and lost 43 percent of the women. Now what happened in 2010? We stayed home. We heard about health care. We heard about Bart Stupak. Remember him, that wonderful family member? And, and we heard a lot of our Democratic friends one more time say to women, you gotta take one for the team. You know? Now it's a team they never let us play on <laughs> until it's time to take one. And then it's okay. Now you're going to take one for the team. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want to play on the team. It's going to take one for the team. Yeah. And I think women were just so doggone angry about it that they just didn't bother. And it was hard to go out. But look what happened. And I am telling you, we cannot let that happen again. And we cannot let the perfect be the enemy <laughs> of just getting by. <laughs> now, what I think we really have to do is leave here and all commit to maybe have everybody give you five, go out and find five women that you can really work on and that you can make sure get to those polls. I want to tell you something about this state, that made me sit down on the curb and cry. I literally was out registering people in this state and, you know, the, the third time this happened, I just, I was devastated. The first time it happened, I thought, oh, well, I just got, you know, somebody was a little nuts. The second time, I thought, mmm. And the third time, mmm. That did it. What happened was, I would knock, and I would say, you really should register. It's very important. Start talking about it. And this lady said, well, honey, you're not from here, are you? And I said, no. Obviously, you can tell by my accent. I'm not from Florida. But I live here now, and I can't blah, blah, blah. She said, well, honey, if you're from here, you know it makes no difference because they don't count our votes in Florida. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a lot of people thinking that. So they got to get out and they're doing everything they can to take the votes away from us. They really are. So I could go on and on. I know you're looking at wine outside and so I'm not going to do that. But my answer to Stupac and all of these people we're talking about, you know, don't fund Planned Parenthood, don't fund um, contraception. Women have to get the reproductive stuff through a special little 
writer, they can go buy their own writer for that. We won't have it in healthcare. Okay, well then let's put men's Viagra, the resectomies, the macho men who won't wear helmets when they ride on a motorcycle, men and fertility. Let's get them a little writer for that too, huh? How about you do that? I am, I am going to quit because I could go on for four hours and i got so many things. But just remember, if your dreams aren't big enough and scare you, then they're not big enough. The dreams have got to scare you. And we got to really dream about when we're really on the team. And when we're really on the team, we may take one for the team occasionally, only when it's our turn. But if they're not letting us on the team, we can't take it anymore. And the fact that this is really serious, this whole thing about Social Security, about health care, all of this could come unraveled. And these darn courts with their Walmart decision and all of that, these are all impacting women and children. And all of the cuts are women and children. That's not the America that I'm part of. And so women, people are going to tell you 10 reasons why they're mad they don't want to go vote. Just tell them, don't get mad and go vote. That's the real reason to go vote, or you're going to believe our magic will be next time. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.